Five. Well, welcome everybody. It's time for another session. So what we're going to do is like um, how to eat well, healthier, and do it for less, and how to make it a little bit simpler. So we have lots to lots to lots to learn about. And uh, this says healthy cooking for less. Um, you know, one of the things that um, I'm hearing most of us aren't always the world's good cook, uh, the world's best cook. I'm a lousy cook. I love eating, um, but I, I, I can burn water. And um, so what we're going to do is just try to explore right now, because one of the things that really worries me is that 60% of the calories that most Canadians eat are from processed food. And that's probably a terrible, in fact, I know it's a terrible thing. So how do we, how do we change that? And, um, we're all busy, and so we're going to actually explore a little bit of that today, and we're going to have more sessions on that as well. So, uh, um, Stuart, I'm going to let you take it away and tell us some, some stories here. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, everyone on YouTube, everyone in the WebEx. Uh, today, we're talking about healthy cooking for less. We're going to be discussing some strategies for creating affordable and nutritious meals, and we're going to teach you ways to uh, cook healthier, quicker, and hopefully not sacrifice any taste or quality. So uh, we'll get started right here with our first slide. Um, again, we'd just like to welcome you, everyone. Uh, and before we begin, I just wanted to check in and see how we've all been doing this past week. You know, I, I think here at the clinic, we really want to emphasize setting some goals. You know, we have these weekly webinars all the time to encourage an environment where everyone can kind of share their experiences uh, and learn what works and what doesn't work for them. Uh, I think the important thing to realize is that it's definitely okay to try, and it's definitely okay not to succeed the first time, the second time, the 100th time. You know, we're all human, and, and failures are a part of that. So it's important to get back up on your feet and try again and try new things. So when we're uh, presenting today, we're going to be giving you some recipes, we're going to give you some ideas, some peace of mind for how to live a healthier life and we want you to think about your healthcare goals what do you think works for you what do you think doesn't works for you and what changes do you think you can make even within the next 30 days that's gonna make you a healthier person moving forward so the first thing we want to do is we we do this quite often but we want to start our presentation discussing smart goals uh, anyone who's watching on the WebEx link and anyone who's watching on YouTube we encourage you right now to think of a SMART goal that you can implement in your life. Now what is a SMART goal? So a SMART goal is something that's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's irrelevant, and it has a time. So there's a time basis in terms of when you want to achieve this goal. So for me, I've established a goal. My goal is I want to now run three days a week. Typically I, I do it two days a week and the third time is once in a blue moon. For me, my attainable goal is I want to run 30 minutes three times a week. Uh, now, this is measurable because I already do it two times a week, so it's not a major change for me, but it's something that's going to make me healthier. It's attainable in the sense that it's not a major change. It's relevant to me because I enjoy it, and with school starting up, it helps me provide a little bit of balance in my life. And finally, I want to do it within the next few months before snow hits and I have to start running indoors. So for me, that's my SMART goal. For anyone who's watching on YouTube and anyone who's watching on the WebEx, we encourage you in the comments section to let us know if you're interested in establishing a SMART goal and if you're interested in our volunteers helping you reach your SMART goal. So if you are, we encourage you to put your name down, uh, let us know times that work for you so that we can call you and we can work on these SMART goals together. So anyone who's interested, please just put a comment in the, in the chat uh, and we'll make sure that we are in touch with you so that you can reach that SMART goal and we can all reach it together. So my SMART goal um, is starting this Monday, September 14th. I'm going on a high keto diet with predominantly more fish and healthier fats. And right in front of me, I'm having a nutritious dinner. What I have is a hunk of salmon that was frozen that my wife prepared. And we got a bag of salad, and I'm having my favorite, or my second favorite beverage, 
What's my favorite beverage there, Stuart? Oh, one sec. So my favorite beverage happens to be coffee, because I drink coffee. a lot of it, but the best beverage coffee is water. water. So I'm having water. And um, and uh, my smart goal is to get 165 pounds, and I'm going to do it over and over again. And so right now I'm 170... We are well, 170 and a half right now, so I'm, I'm hovering around that 170 range. I was doing it to 165. I'm inching my way downwards, and I'm hoping this high keto diet will put me over the edge. And we're encouraging anybody who wants to work with us is that this September 14th, we're going to start a high keto diet for those who want to. Uh, Chad's on the line over here, and he's going to actually talk in the next little while about a high vegetarian diet plant-based eating program, and different strokes for different folks. I never thought that I would actually be talking about a hot uh, keto diet, but um, in January 2020, British Medical Journal, BMJ, a very prestigious journal, actually had a series of experts talking about it, and it raises the door. Um, so, um, And those who are really interested, they can look at the webinar from last week, where we did talk about a keto diet, a healthier one. Uh, I was talking to a number of people today who swear by a keto diet, but most people who are, and one person actually lost 60 pounds, which is terrific, um, but they're eating butter, they're eating bacon, uh, their cholesterol is still through this roof, um, and uh, so, I, so I, the keto diet is not enough to control that person's cholesterol, but really suppress their appetite. They've been on it for about a year and a half right now, um, and they're being successful. So I'm going to help that person modify it. Um, doesn't like fish, doesn't like nuts, and uh, but it's going to use a uh, vegetable form with, uh, with canola, olive oil, and olives, um, walnuts he, can, he, he likes, and uh, it's going to add more chia seeds to that. So there's different ways of doing it. Um, so, uh, so Stay tuned. So, um, but one of the things is that we need, we need to cook better, and we need to actually cook what's in our budget. And uh, how do we do that? So, uh, Stuart's going to tell us how to do that today. Yeah. And uh, before I do that, Chad just post, posted a comment uh, saying that he's also happy to provide any guidance and recipes for anyone who's interested in a plant-based diet. He also provided his email. Uh, the email is chad at expertmediator.ca, uh, and you can have. Uh, sorry, you can, uh, you'll have to find the drive within yourself to improve. Uh, if you want to change your life and feel better, you need to reduce cholesterol, remove inflammation from your body, uh, and overall feel much better. So if you're interested, please email him, and he was very happy and generous with his time to be able to help you. So thank you, Chad. Before we get in to discussing a little bit about a plant-based diet, first thing I want to talk about is cooking from home. So cooking from home can be a great way uh, to bond with your family and also your friends. I think a lot of us in quarantine may have uh, picked up our cooking skills a little bit, myself included. Uh, and the thing about cooking at home is that it gives you an opportunity to try new things, experiment with different foods, and see what you enjoy and what doesn't. Um, I think when you do something like this, you'll realize that there are a lot of cheaper alternatives than what you may have been doing in the past. Uh, and you'll realize that, that cooking from home, especially during a time like quarantine, saves you a lot of money over time. Uh, cooking from home also gives you the opportunity to explore your different interests and gain a sense of control in your diet. You might be able to recognize things like added preservatives and processed ingredients that you had no idea was in your diet and was masked behind uh, marketing and, and things like that where you think it's healthy but you don't realize the amount of cholesterol or the amount of sodium in these foods. So in a Harvard study, or um, part, pardon me, not a Harvard study, but in research studies, they have shown that cooking at home and consuming home-cooked meals is associated with uh, increased ability to retain your healthy diet, improved cardiovascular health overall, and also it has a huge financial benefit both in the short term and the long term. So we're going to give you a number of recipes here and we also have provided a link uh, down below in the description of the email uh, which gives you access to a website which has a number of healthy uh, recipes 
Um, and there's also a link for keto diet recipes as well, if that's something you're interested in. And as an aside, if you are interested in learning more about the keto diet, we did a fantastic presentation last week on the keto and fish diet. Uh, and so Dr. said that uh, if you're interested in joining him on his initiative on September 14th to join the keto diet and you want to learn a little more, please feel free to check that video out. It's a really great one. And don't register too as well. And so we can follow you and we'll give you some support. We're going to have some fun. Then eventually we're going to go beat up on Chad about his vegetarian diet plan. We're going to have lots of fun. I'm going to do all these diets. I'm going to do them three days at a time. You got it. So here's a few other helpful tips uh, while we're talking. Uh, one really great one is preparing your grocery list at home and making sure that whenever you go to the grocery store, you're allocating a budget specifically for the things that you need and not for the things that you don't need. So allowing yourself to plan ahead, plan your meals, plan your snacks, the things that you enjoy um, is very important. So it's important to plan ahead. It helps you to gain a sense of organization. It helps you save money. Um, and it also helps you to make sure that you're staying on the diet that you've set out to achieve. So another great way of doing this is meal planning. Uh, when I'm at university, um, I'm cooking my meals a lot of the time, and so I have a schedule of what I'm going to have each day uh, and what I need to prepare in the week to make sure that I can stick to that schedule. So making sure that you're meal planning, meal prepping, uh, and making sure that you're making more than maybe you need in one meal so that you can save it and have it in the future. Um, my family does this a lot. We make huge quantities of, of healthy foods, and then we freeze it and it lasts us four to six months. Uh, that saves us time, uh, it saves a lot of energy in the future, um, and because we know these meals are healthy and we know that they're accessible to us, it's quite easy to heat them up then and, and enjoy them uh, for many months in the future. So let's talk a little bit about meal planning. Uh, the first one right here is just an example of what meal planning might look like if you're engaging in an intermittent fasting diet. So the basics of an intermittent fasting diet is that you can choose your own schedule. So here's just one example that you can choose. In this case, uh, the fasting would take place um, in the morning up until the afternoon leading up to lunch. And then you'd be eating from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and then fasting again until 12 o'clock the next day. So what this does is it reduces the amount of time that you have to snack or, or eat uh, or pick away at the junk food that you enjoy, um, which can also be a huge dent for you financially. So the nice thing about this is you can kind of engage your own schedule, you can take control of how you want to do it, uh, and it also reduces snacking, which I know myself included, I'm, I'm guilty of this all the time. Um, and so this is a schedule that I very much engage in. Um, I usually have a lighter breakfast, if any. Uh, usually just drink some coffee, maybe a little bit of fresh fruit, um, and then leading up to lunch and, and in the afternoon, I'm usually not too hungry anyway, so I don't even eat the snacks. And then I have my dinner. Um, so this is a schedule that works for me. I enjoy it. Um, and it's something that I've implemented recently that's worked for me. Now let's talk a little bit about this grocery list. Um, one thing that we always encourage people to do is to try and shop at the perimeter of a grocery store. Why do we do this? So you might have heard this before from us or from somebody else. The reason why you do this is because a lot of the fresh, healthy produce, uh, all the food, all the, all, the, uh, all the meats, the vegetables, um, the dairy products, they're all going to be at the periphery of the store. And these are typically the essentials in the average diet. Making sure that you're avoiding going in the middle rows where you find the processed foods, the boxed ingredients, the crackers, the chips, uh, all these all these junk foods that um, we may love but we know doesn't love us, uh, we want to avoid. So how do we do this? We stay at the periphery of the store. Another thing we do is we never go to the grocery store when we're hungry. Um, I think when you go to the grocery store when you're hungry, it's going to be your automatic instinct to go in the middle aisles because these are where all the snacks are. These are all the things that are going to satisfy that craving that you have, uh, but it's not going to sustain you for very long. So when you go to the grocery store, you want to make sure that you're not very hungry and that you have a plan of action when you're going. So having this grocery list and sectioning it off uh, into the bulk foods that you need, the fresh produce, the meats, 
and making sure you're allocating your budget and sticking to it uh, is important to save money over time uh, and to eat healthier. Look at that, we have some more tips as well. So another thing that we want to do is a good idea is to try and freeze these bulk ingredients as I mentioned. Uh, this preserves their freshness and it also avoids waste, saves you money over time, and because you've already made it, you've already done a lot of the heavy lifting. So now all you have to do is reheat it and it can last you for as many meals as you have made in the future. So doing that is very important. Um, and I know it works for me and I know it works for many of my friends as well. Um, another thing that we like to do is uh, organize our meals around what's in season and what's on sale. What this does is it keeps things fresh and exciting. So you won't be having the same meals all year round because you're basing your particular meal plan uh, in accordance to what is in season and what is in sale in those particular months. So this is just another helpful tip that uh, I and my family tries to go by uh, whenever we are cooking meals uh, and whenever we're shopping as well. So on the left here, you'll see some of the average problems that many of us face. Okay, so we're overeating, or it's our instinct to grab some fast food on the way home from work because it's quick and easy, or because we're in quarantine, we're having trouble right now, uh, and we're living very much a sedimentary lifestyle. Well, for every problem, there is solutions, and a lot of times, they, they're not as complicated as we may think in the beginning. So we've talked today about organizing a grocery list and making sure that when you go to the grocery store you have a plan of action. Hopefully this helps to mitigate the overeating and eating too many calories on a typical day. Another thing is grabbing fast food. Well how do we do this? We talked about meal prepping. If we're meal prepping and we know that we have meals at home that we've made and that we enjoy, we're not going to be so inclined to stop at McDonald's or stop at Chipotle on the way home from work or when we are working or going on our lunch break because we have these meals prepared and it's just a simple heat and they're ready to go. Finally, for a sedimentary lifestyle, some cool ways to work around this are using your work, if you are working right now in the community, as opportunities for exercise. Simple things like taking the stairs, parking further away from your office so that you can walk throughout the parking lot. Um, these are all just simple things, small things, but if you have a very busy lifestyle and you feel like you can't initiate uh, a major change at this time, these are small steps that do make a difference. Uh, another thing as well is plan exercise with friends. Uh, it's certainly difficult at this time, um, especially during quarantine, but even if you're able to check in on your friends, establish goals together and make sure that you're holding each other accountable for it. Uh, it's, promote some friendly competition is, is never really a bad thing, is it? So these are just some strategies that we can continue to implement moving forward. Next, what I want to jump into, oh, doctor, I think you're muted. Gotcha. Did you want to add anything? Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Chad, please feel free at any moment if you want to add um, anything as well. Uh, right now we're transitioning into plant-based eating 101. First thing we're going to be doing is debunking some popular myths you may have heard about a plant-based diet. Okay. Here's a little uh, running joke that uh, Zoya, who worked on the presentation, wanted to include. Here you have a picture of the pharmacy with the uh, farmer saying, take one a day with tomato and cucumber. Uh, a running joke on what a pharmacy might look like. Uh, if you swap out the pH with an F. So what is plant-based diet and uh, how do you get started on it? Well first let's talk about some myths. Myth number one, meat is the only source of protein. Now we know this is false. There are many other options for proteins out there. Uh, for one, tofu is always a good option, but there's a variety of others as well such as beans, legumes, making sure that you're uh, eating eggs, egg whites especially, uh, these are all fantastic sources of protein. Um, I'm curious to know if anyone would like to propose in the chat how many grams uh, of protein they think are in one cup of black beans. Uh, 
Uh, I'll give you a minute to think about that. One cup of black beans, how many grams of protein do you think is in that? Uh, if you have a chance, uh, I'll give you a moment to uh, type it in the chat, uh, and I'll give you the answer in just a minute. So other alternatives that are also significant in protein include collard greens, kale, spinach, as I mentioned, beans and legumes. Making sure they're eating whole grains, nuts, seeds, such as chai seeds. Uh, also things that contain fiber. These are things that tend to sustain you for much longer. Um, and they're much lower in cost compared to meats such as chicken or steak, pork, and things of that nature. Um, and let me check if anyone has a, uh, a guess. So the answer for one cup of black beans, it's about 38 to 40 grams of protein, just in that. So that goes to show you how much protein is in things such as your basic beans and your legumes. All right, so the next thing we wanna talk about is the fact that we are overeating in terms of our, uh, our daily recommended intake of proteins. So if you t take a look on the left here, you'll see the average American diet. Um, on, a, on a bad day, some may have three strips of bacon, two breakfast sausages, and uh, a big mound of eggs for breakfast. Then they may also have a ham sandwich with two slices of ham. And then for dinner, a big bowl of uh, spaghetti bolognese. Uh, that alone, all together, is 285 grams in total. Now... Studies have shown that we are in fact consuming way too much protein and a lot of it is processed meats, something that we want to cut out of our diet as much as possible. So what we can do is we can cut it down. If you take a look at the top example, you'll see that by cutting it in half, you're cutting the amount of grams uh, you are eating from that meal in half. Uh, that's significant because Already you can see in that breakfast meal you're overeating in terms of how much you want to eat in the entire day. Other solutions would be swapping things out, substituting your ham with things like chicken or tuna, which is very much lower uh, in grams. And finally, you can take away the bulk. So instead of using meats, as we talked about using beans and extra veggies to help sustain you and fill you up, uh, instead of using this processed meats, uh, these are just some simple strategies that you can implement, but they're going to make an important difference. So trying to reduce the amount of processed and red meat consumption is, is a, a step that we can all try and take, I think, uh, and we can continue to work towards. Dr. did you want to add anything? So it's kind of interesting is that, is that, um, is that how much protein do you need? And there's still a debate, but uh, as you point out, there is very few people that I see that are protein uh, deficient. And maybe as you get older, you need more protein if you're convalescing, but uh, you can see there for the average North American, we're getting too much protein. Uh, and uh, but on the other hand, is that it's the quality of the protein that's important too as well. So I think as you point out, is that uh, the best source of protein for the planet for the animals uh, is, is still plant based, and uh, beans are, are are something that most of us can eat more of. It makes you feel fuller. It has a higher fiber content. So I think it's a good thing. Um, and uh, so we're, we're going to actually explore a little bit that in, in more detail later date. So uh, to me, I look at that diet there. So I, I, I don't eat processed meat at this stage. I don't eat really, really any meat at all. Um, and uh, I'm eating a lot more egg whites. Uh, cholesterol content in egg yolks is still a debatable issue. So basically for most of us is that uh, protein's not much of an issue now. People who replace carbohydrate, whether fat or protein, tend to feel fuller, and uh, so um, so you have to you have to judge for yourself. Is that um, most of us eating too much? And high protein, high good protein that you can get from 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 beans, as you, you mentioned, is, is is not a bad idea. And uh, and I think we can have more liberal use of eggs, uh, but I use a lot more egg whites. And so my favorite thing to do is just to take egg whites. I buy it in a um, in like a liter container, and I, I just throw in all these vegetables and put it in the microwave. And presto, I have a uh, a omelet in uh, two minutes or to five minutes or less. So, uh, so that's good. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doctor gave you a little tease of something we'll show you in a little bit. 
uh, in terms of his uh, breakfast omelets. Uh, the next thing that I, I want to touch upon is the idea of living a sustainable life. I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Kernu introduced this uh, just a moment ago, but uh, doing things that are sustainable for the planet. Uh, it's much easier way to supply fresh, a much easier way to get fresh herbs instead of going out and buying it all the time is to grow them yourselves. So if you have a small space in your backyard, it's always a nice idea to start your own little local garden with fresh produce and this is a much more sustainable way to eat. Uh, I know around the corner I have a Terra greenhouse, uh, a place I used to work at actually, um, and they have a fantastic variety of, of fresh, uh, fresh herbs such as mint, oregano, rosemary, and basil. Uh, and in fact, this is, uh, this is the one we have right outside our house. So we use this pretty much every day. Um, in it, you'll see that we have dill, we have rosemary, we have some mint, and we have some thyme. Um, and I think my mother and I are always excited about the new things that we can try with, uh, with all these fresh herbs just outside, growing outside our door. So uh, it's huge now, and, and there's a lot of things that we can, uh, we can do with it. But um, we might just give this to some of our friends as well to help promote the idea of uh, paying it forward and living a sustainable and uh, healthier life for yourself and for the planet. So this is our, uh, our little baby right over here. And uh, we'll continue to give you updates on new ways that we're using it. Doctor, I think you're muted. Over the winter time, how do you, uh, what do you do? Do you get, still get herbs over, over the winter time? Um, not as much. Unfortunately, we try and let it grow as much as it can, but it wilts away around that time. Um, we bring it indoors. We try to give it as much sunlight as we can. Um, you know, we, we, and, but then in the spring months, as soon as uh, the snow goes away, we go and we buy this thing again. And, uh, and then we keep on using it. So we have a lot here. We have a lot here, doctor. So uh, we got to get cooking, I think. Nice. <laughs> All right. So speaking of basic ingredients, such as uh, herbs, such as I've showed you, uh, let's talk about some creative ways to use some of these basic ingredients. Um, as you can see right here, we have a list of basic ingredients which you can find at the grocery store. We have cans of chickpeas and black beans, uh, bags of quinoa, we have sweet potatoes, we have cauliflower, and we have broccoli. Um, you can see right here that, surprisingly enough, a, a bag of chickpeas, that's almost half a dollar. I mean, uh, a, a can of black beans is just one dollar. You know, a big bag of quinoa, which uh, 14 ounces is very significant, uh, just five dollars. Uh, per potato, it's less than a dollar for a sweet potato. And a head of cauliflower or broccoli, it's less than three dollars. And so these are foods that are going to sustain you. And uh, they're not that expensive. Um, and so these are alternatives that you can try and implement uh, in some of your diets as potential substitutes. I know that recently... Uh, the big fad these days is trying uh, buffalo cauliflower. Um, some things that we've done recently in my house is instead of doing chicken, um, we have been trying to do these lettuce buffalo cauliflower uh, tacos. Um, and so most of the ingredients, it's vegetable and plant-based. Uh, the only thing I think we can improve on is maybe uh, diluting the, uh, the sauce that we use a little bit because there's probably a lot more sodium than I think I realized there is in there. But... Um, small steps that are uh, sustainable for the planet and quite delicious, frankly. So here you have a picture of a uh, can of beans we just talked about. So for most cans of beans, um, a general tip is it's always a good idea to rinse off the salt. So if you're buying them uh, and they're in a package, uh, or sorry, they're in a can, oftentimes they are richer in salt than you may want to admit. You can see right here that with these maple style beans, there's 440 milligrams, which is 19% of the average uh, so, uh, daily value someone wants to have in just half a cup. So how do we work around this? Well, we can try and rinse it. Another thing as well is we can combine these maple beans with other types of beans, such as just basic black beans. Uh, that way we can reduce the sweetness, but still keep some of its flavor. I love um, um, maple syrup, and I love uh, bl black beans, so um, 
unfortunately, when you buy them, they're not the most healthiest. In the, on our book, 30 Days to Healthier You, we have a nice recipe in there if you want to look at that. So, But when I'm on the fly, I, I don't think I'm going to rinse off my maple beans in, in water. I'm not going to wash out all the, the sweetness out of it. But uh, I will do is take some some of these, these beans and then just add in... Um, they mentioned black beans to that, uh, or kidney beans, and those ones I'll rinse. Um, Chad in the future is going to show you how to make your own beans, um, but um, and uh, so, uh, so there's different ways of doing this. So we're just over here trying to how you be healthier, how to make this work, and I think that initial. Chad, do you want to say something about um, how you make your beans right now, or we'll have a separate talk about that? Just say a couple words for just two seconds about uh, how easy it is to, uh, to 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 make your own beans. It's about soaking them and stuff, and, and oops. I think it's about soaking them that, but I do a lot of, unfortunately, the quick fix of using the tins, and um, which aren't as healthy for you because of the BPA and the lining of the, the tin and that. So if you can just spend like um, a little bit of extra time by throwing some... Um, fresh dried beans into um, some water and throw it in the refrigerator the day before and I do it that way. But um, so, and I don't buy any, and I always mix my beans as well. And there's so many varieties of beans. beans. Nice. Go ahead there, Stuart. Okay, Chad, while we have you, do you, you want to share a few comments on uh, sprouted grains? Um, the, when we're talking about the sprouts and stuff like that, um, sprouted bread or any of your um, sprouts are a healthier way to go, but that's a whole other different topic and the reasoning why behind you want to go with the, the sprouts. So if it's okay, if we can leave that for uh, for another seminar, that'd be great because it's really in-depth. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So here's just... Thank you. And here's another slide of just uh, a simple snack that we can try. Uh, if you don't have allergies, unfortunately, I'm excluded from this group. Uh, what you can do is you can try sprouted grains, um, which are a healthier alternative than obviously whole, uh, white, white bread. And then you can uh, implement it with either some creamy almond butter or some peanut butter. Um, these are better fats for you than something like a Nutella. And, uh, of course, has a lot less sugar in and it's a it's a snack that has a lot of protein as well, so it keeps you quite sustained for longer. So one of the things is that uh, if you walk away with a message here, it, it replace anything that's white with green, you're always better off. And um, unfortunately, sprout grains or any any bread, uh, whole wheat, whatever it is, I just eat too much, and uh, that's why I'm interested in trying this keto diet to see if I can curb my appetite. Because last night I started really well. I had the salmon, the salad, and then I went to, to some whole wheat toast again, and uh, I, I, I I lost it again. So I'm gonna starting on Monday. There's gonna be no bread in the house, um, and it's, we're gonna shoot it and bury it for for a month and see how that does. Yeah. Cool. Is there uh, anyone else in the house that's also going along with the diet with you? Uh, my. Uh, my uh, well, my, my two sons are back at uh, school. Uh, my daughter is uh, can eat at a very slow pace and doesn't eat that much, so uh, she doesn't want to do this, but she doesn't need to. Uh, my wife is uh, so. My wife is uh, she's going to give up alcohol for thirty days if I give up uh, the breads and the grains for um, for uh, for a period of time. So we're going to have some fun with that, and she's actually. Uh, um, uh, getting the kitchen ready for that, and uh, hopefully this Sunday, Chad and I are going to go shopping together, and uh, we'll have some fun with that. Nice. So here's Doctor uh, telling you about the calorie content in both your almond butter and your peanut butter. So in just two tablespoons, you'll see that there's about 210 calories in almond butter uh, and 180 calories in peanut butter. Uh, if we also take a look at some of the nutrition facts you'll see here, uh, it's surprisingly rich in uh, proteins, uh, it's fairly low in carbohydrates, uh, and also fiber, it's not too bad as well, So at least for the, uh, for the almond butter up top. So um, these are foods that are going to help sustain you for longer, and as Dr. Kearney mentioned, uh, anytime you could swap out white breads for uh, whole wheats, uh, and then even you know, you're putting something on top like almond butter or peanut butter, you might not even taste the difference, but 
Um, it's, a, it's an important change that's uh, going to sustain you for longer and it's got a lot more fiber and a lot more uh, uh, macronutrients as well, including magnesium and potassium, which yeah, you want to get as much of that as you can. So um, small change, but good change. So what you can see that they're very rich in calories, you got to watch out. Mm -hmm. um, I love almond butter because it's been shown in the a randomized trial to be a beneficial fat. Um, and because it's so much more expensive, I'm a cheapskate, so I use very little of it. Um, so I'm a big fan of uh, almond butter at this stage. I, I, I sort of love peanut butter, but uh, I think um, uh, look at the calories, see how it fits into your diet. Um, what I'm going to do uh, next week is I'm going to put some hummus or some almond butter butter instead of putting it on, uh, on 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 bread i'm going to put it on celery sticks and uh, green pepper and red peppers and things of that nature so i'm going to uh, as part of my uh, high fat diet i'm going to be going that in that direction remember is i, I want to pick healthy foods um and um peanut butter and almond butter are healthy foods uh, but they're rich in calories so you got to be careful right keeping with the theme of breakfast you want to talk a little bit about your uh, white egg omelet yeah, so um, this is actually looks nicer than, than my one. Um, with uh, I eat a lot of egg whites because, as you know, eggs are a controversial area. Uh, I think it's certainly not a, a bad food, and people who like eggs, um, um, it's reasonable. Some of hyperabsorbed cholesterol from um, from the egg yolk, and uh, the egg yolk kind of contains about 250, 300 milligrams of cholesterol, um, and the egg white uh, is basically uh, more of a protein-based food, and it fills you up. So what I do is that uh, I, I love spinach. I think Chad loves spinach, too, as well. So I take a bunch of spinach. I buy those big bags of it, and I, I put a little touch of water, put it in the, the microwave, and I put any onions that I can see or peppers, any leftover vegetables, I just put in there, microwave it for about uh, less than two minutes. And then um, instead of cooking it in a nice... Uh, uh, situation like you see on this picture, I just put the egg whites in the the microwave, and if I really want a treat, um, I will um, add a touch of cheese to that, and in you know in five minutes or less, I have a a scrumptious meal that is rich in protein, lower in calories, and good for you, and easy to do, and quite inexpensive. You got it. So yeah. I think the takeaway there is. Simple but effective and rich in proteins and vegetables, and you can't get it, can't get enough veggies. So, uh, as we move on here, uh, we have a few pictures of uh, the sprouted uh, grains that uh, Chad mentioned. Uh, this is something we'll go into detail probably a little bit more in the future. Um, as Chad mentioned, it's a, it's a conversation for a later date, but you can see that even just with the nutrition facts here, um, it's quite healthy in terms of the fact that. It's uh, richer in proteins. It's it's good in terms of your dietary fiber, um, and uh, I guess the rest of it we'll we'll go into potentially on a later date. Um, but if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, uh, you can certainly check into future webinars. Uh, and if it's interest something that interests you in terms of uh, shopping, uh, you can see that with the country harvest loaf, it's just uh, three forty nine at the local grocery store. So it's interesting. The uh, there's usually some bread on sale somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you should get it for about uh, two for five dollars. Um, um, so, but the problem is when I have one piece, I usually end up between four and six pieces of uh, toast. Um, so uh, it uh, and 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 bread is um, it really it does it does have uh, the glycemic index is isn't particularly good in sense it gets broken down quite quickly. Uh, there's no such word as white bread in our, our house, uh, so they're all uh, fiber content, at least two grams of fiber per, per, per piece. You, you can get to four or five in some, some breads. Mm -hmm. um, most breads are about 100 calories plus per, per, per slice, so um, if not, not careful, I can eat a thousand calories in just in bread and uh, almond butter if I'm not careful. Um, Tastes good, but um, I, it's a weakness for myself. So for some people, uh, Chad can have one piece, and that's great. My son can have one piece. I have to have four to six if I'm not careful. Mm -hmm. So everybody learn yourself in different strokes for different folks. Um, and bread is a high source of uh, sodium in most people's diet. Um, 
they'll be careful about that as well. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, did you want to provide a comment on this slide as well? Uh, it's interesting is that uh, you can see that um, they're roughly all the same amount of uh, calories. So if you're going to say, um, and you can see this white bread is 66 calories, but um, the, 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 the bread that you just showed every time is about 110 calories per slice. So I feel fullest after one sweet potato with the skin on. Uh, next, one potato, and I feel the least full after having white or I, I don't, or just whole wheat, I whole wheat toast right now. So, um, so uh, for me, I'm I'm always hungry, and to curb my appetite, I um, what I sometimes do as well is I in those beans that uh, I, I put in the microwave. I put everything in the microwave. I I take a can of um, um, uh, black beans. I take the the, uh, the, the beans and uh, other tomato sauce or maple syrup. And then I, I put a couple of uh, potatoes with the skins on or sweet potatoes in the microwave. And then after that, uh, I just put them all together in one big mash dish, whatever, and uh, eat that together there. So, uh, but it, that's a relatively um, um, favorite of mine. So, uh, so I'm trying to do is replace um as much as I can with real food and potatoes and sweet potato is real food. They're mm -hmm. roughly the same in the sense of health effects. Um, and they're also for a diabetic, you got to be careful. Sometimes you can have a rise in blood sugar, but you know, um, uh, not a bad choice. And it's also inexpensive. You can buy, you know, a bag of 10 pounds of potatoes for next to nothing. And, um, you can just ha have them as you go on. So sometimes at nighttime when I'm really hungry, I'll take a baked potato, put a few holes in it, and just put in the microwave for about four minutes, five minutes, and there you go. I have uh, baked potato raw, nothing else on it. Um, and I make sure you put a couple holes in the baked potato. Uh, you make you wash it first because if you put a baked potato in your microwave uh, without putting a few holes in it, it will blow up, and that's not good. <laughs> you sound like someone who knows that from experience. I, I you know it. I, I, one of the things is is trying fast, good things that are, are better choices. So uh, white bread is a four-letter word, um, and uh, you can see some improvements there, but you've got to be careful. Uh, um, um, if you eat too much rice and potato, uh, that's a carbohydrate. You you put, your, you put yourself at risk for diabetes, so be careful about that. Right. Uh, but certainly whole wheat, white, uh, certain types of rice, you can always get better. So uh, that, that white thing on the right side is don't, don't, don't eat that. Right. If there's a person that you don't like, by all means, um, serve serve white bread to people you don't care for. <laughs> uh, and then we have a question as well. Um, someone is asking just about the uh, the, <coughs> the peanut butter, and, and Chad provided a comment now. But um, why are we going with jarred nut butters when there are, are alternatives such as nuts in the cupboard, uh, no salt, no sugar, but you can add them. I think that's very good. So, so, so to me, I like this idea that, that the peanut butter that I buy uh, is just crushed peanuts. No, nothing else added to that. So, you know, like, um, you're absolutely right. So if, if the, the peanut butter, I'll just show you what we have over here. This is actually a blue menu, which you can see it, it is liquid looking. So that means there's no trans fats added to this. There is no sugar added to this. This are just crushed Nuts, peanuts, and so uh, and the same thing with almond butter as well. So absolutely, the type of the type of peanut butter or the type of nuts that you buy very very important. So having a few nuts as well is a great great idea too as well. So I, I do snack on almonds and things of that nature. I have to be careful because I can easily um, um, go through a bag of uh, nuts very quickly. And when I buy nuts, I make sure the the unsalted ones as well because salt makes you eat more. And uh, and most of it to myself. So absolutely. So uh, so I, I I agree with that comment very 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 importantly. But you can buy peanut butter, almond butter that are just crushed mm -hmm. nuts. You got it. And Dr. Kearney mentioned his favorite drinks. He loves coffee, uh, as do I. And his uh, first favorite though is water. Uh, why do we drink water instead of things like juices that claim to be healthy? Well. If you look at a juice, your typical glass of orange juice, uh, I honestly don't know the exact number, but it's almost like drinking a, a cup of soda, I would almost think, in terms of the amount of sugars that you're, you're getting in. And unless it's 
unless it's more freshly squeezed and more natural, it's, it's not going to be those natural sugars that you're going to get if you bite into an orange. So they're adding extra, extra sugars. And even though you may think it's healthy, the amount of sugar you're consuming is far greater than how much you would want to have um, in just a small glass, uh, 250 you know, milligrams. Yeah, so it's interesting is that um, uh, you, can, you, you can buy juices that are unsweetened, natural mm -hmm. juices. So to me, I think you're better off eating the, the actual uh, orange grapes and things of that nature because um, uh, you get the fiber content and, uh, and you get the, the good stuff that you get from fruits and vegetables. Um, we're going to actually show you some smoothies that you can do if, you, if you're that type of person. Um, I think having two glasses of water before every meal, I said this before and I'll say it over and over again, if you have two glasses of water between before every meal, you will actually lose five pounds over time. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the best beverage right now. And, uh, and uh, in Paris, France, you get uh, free water everywhere you go. They have these fountains from, uh, uh, of water available all over Paris. And uh, if I was the Canadian government and you were know, looking at new ideas to invigorate Canada, is that I would make um, um, water stations all around Canada uh, free uh, available, and that's something I would expect the public sector to fund. And and there goes all the, um, the the bottled water industry. There goes a lot of the beverage industry. Water is a good, healthy food. Period. Yeah, yeah. So let's briefly talk about salads. Uh, salads are a quick thing that you can make. Uh, they're a great lunch and they're a great dinner as well. Um, my mother, uh, she has a salad. I, I would say eight days a week. She's got a salad every single day for dinner while she's making me something else. Uh, she goes for the salad because um, she enjoys it. She knows that it makes her feel good. Um, and on top of being very active, you know, it's a good way for her to end her day. So um, how do you make salads? Well, you can use a, pretty much anything you have. Um, there's so many different combinations that you can use for salads. You can have uh, vegetables. You can put in fruits to get a little bit of sweetness. Uh, some cucumbers, some onions, tomatoes, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, uh, or just little uh, the smaller red tomatoes as well are fantastic and they provide a little pop of flavor. Uh, you can also roast your vegetables as well in the oven. Um, if you think that that will be good in your salad, you can introduce it or you can just use it on the side as well. So um, if you want to make it a full meal as well, you can add some sources of protein such as canned beans. Uh, making sure that you are, if they're like black beans, that you're rinsing them, uh, or also nuts, uh, unsalted preferably, of course. Um, and then, you know, you got a meal right there. Um, in terms of your dressing as well, uh, it's best to keep it simple. Um, some good solutions would be a pure balsamic vinegar or just some simple, uh, you know, lime and lemon zest and, and just a little bit of the juice on top of it as well. So, um it, trying to stay away from the pre-prepared salad dressings if possible is important because um, even just looking downstairs before this presentation I realized how much sugar is on a lot of these pre-prepared dressings which I enjoy. Um, you can also see right here we have on our list as well. If you want to add a little bit of carbs and you're not uh, joining us in the keto diet of course you can add some brown rice or quinoa as well. So. Here's another simple recipe. Uh, this is keeping with the same theme, it's a pasta salad. So um, for anyone who's watching on YouTube or the WebEx, you're more than welcome to rewatch this video or take a picture if this is something that interests you. Um, all you would need is just some cooked whole wheat pasta, uh, some sliced cucumbers, bell peppers, onions, tomatoes, chickpeas, spinach, and canned corn. And then for dressing, just a simple combination of olive oil, lemon juice, a little bit of salt, pepper, basil, and a little bit of Italian seasoning. Um, then you want to serve that cold as well. Uh, make it in large quantities and you have enough to serve the entire family. So, um, My mother does something very similar to this. She also does a, uh, a bean salad as well um, every once in a while where the uh, main source of protein is just black beans and then um, red peppers, onions, uh, um, cilantro, uh, and just a simple combination of olive oil and uh, balsamic vinegar on top. 
So let's talk about soups. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about soups is because they're pretty simple. Uh, I think a good takeaway that we want to want to give you here is that uh, it doesn't need to take a long time to, to make a good healthy meal for yourself. So all you need to do is throw a few things in the blender. Uh, anything you find in the pantry, you can add a number of spices and the next thing you know you'll have yourself a nice soup. Uh, you can roast some basic vegetables as well, some, uh, some green peppers, some onions, uh, and then you can add that as well. Just a little bit of garlic and spice adds a little bit of flavor as well. Um, you want to avoid using store-bought broths on, I believe it's the next few slides, we'll talk about how you can make your own broth uh, using just some water and some simple vegetables. Uh, and of course, if you're into lentils as well, you can uh, add some lentils and vegetables to add a little bit more substance to your soup as well. So here we are in terms of our basic broth. Um, how do you make a broth? Well, all you need to do is you take a number of the basic uh, ingredients that you have in your house, the leftover potato peels, carrot scrapes, the outer layers of onions, a little bit of leftover garlic, some vegetable scraps you have, add some salt and pepper, uh, add a little bit of herbs and dried spices, put it in some water and, and make sure you're boiling it uh, on a low heat for several minutes. Then you can add this to any combination of ingredients you like and you have yourself a nice broth for your soups. Uh, quick, easy, simple, and, and certainly healthy as well, as long as you're keeping a close eye on the amount of salt you're adding. So it's kind of interesting is that uh, I had um, one of my patients say that uh, anytime that she had leftover vegetables or, 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 or you know vegetable scraps or whatever, she would put in the freezer um, and then every once in a while, um, you know, any leftover cuttings and stuff that were on the fish, she just boil, would boil them. So Chad, when you um, make your uh, broth there, how long do you uh, boil it for? Usually it's about 15 to 20 minutes, and but I have a wide variety. So I find um, the ends of celery, um, I add in different onions, whatever I'm, I've, I've cut up, it all goes into a Tupperware container, it goes in the refrigerator, and then when I'm ready to make my next soup, which is, I eat soup every day, so uh, a particular soup, so I, I just add that to, to do my base. So it is, it's very nutritious if you can do that rather than going and getting oxo cubes and, and um, other uh, processed uh, bases. And so you can make a chad cube. So after you've made your, your broth, you can just put it into an ice tray, put it in the freezer if you want, and uh, if you want if you if you want to use that for for a later date. There, um, what happens if you boil it for uh, let's say an hour or two? What happens? Well, you start uh, boiling away your nutrients, so you don't want to do that either. So you want to pull the nutrients out, but you don't want to boil it for too long. And you just want to boil it at a low heat for like about 15, 20 minutes or so. Is that right? Yeah, generally that's what I do. I bring it up to that particular uh, rolling boil, and then I reduce the heat down to a very, like a simmer boil, and uh, pull the, the nutrients out, and then I turn it off and keep the lid on and, um, and just let it soak through. And then I'll strain it afterwards. All your cuttings are all strained out, and then now you have your actual base. Simple. No, even I can do that. <laughs> yeah, and it actually, it, it's one of those things on your budget. It, it saves you money. Why are you going to go out and get a processed flick into um, different broths, right? Nice. How long do you have to before, before it will go bad if you put it in the fridge again? Oh, um, to be honest, I would, um, like, my cuttings can go three, four, or five days, Um and I'll, I'll check it out. But other than that, once you've done your broth, you only want to keep it in the refrigerator for no more than about three days before you're actually making your, your soup. And the other thing, too, if you want, if you can, you can put all your cuttings, you can actually freeze it if you want to, and then, yes. and then you can use it at a later date if you want to. So um, don't, don't get rid of your cuttings. Um, there's, there's a lot of healthy stuff in there. Thank you. And that, and sorry, that was a very good point about putting it in ice cube trays, because sometimes if you're going to even make um, rice or um, other things that require water um, to flavor your rice or your quinoa, 
um, other things, then you just uh, throw in X amount of cubes of whatever it's asking for the water. So, yeah, you freeze it, keeps it a lot um, more nutritious, and and um, then you've got more of a full base for, for your rice or quinoa or whatever else that you're using the water for. Fantastic. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, uh, let's talk a little bit about food science. How has food changed the shift to pleasure eating? So take a look at what we have on the screen here. Everything you're seeing right here is 100 calories. The important thing to note here is that some things are going to sustain you for about 15 minutes and some things might sustain you for uh, you know one to two hours, uh, even more potentially. Um, you can see right here that if I was to eat two Oreo cookies right now, um, I would be going down after this presentation and eating more. Um, but if I was to eat something like uh, 20 roasted peanuts or seven and a half pecans, uh, this is going to sustain me. Uh, and, it's, and it's those 100 calories that uh, those two Oreos would have provided me. Um, so it's a little peace of mind. Uh, and it's interesting to see how uh, things like two peaches, um, that would definitely fulfill, fill me up, especially with the fiber content. Uh, and uh, it's only 100 calories. So you can eat uh, some really healthy foods, um, especially vegetables um, and, and beans and, and natural legumes, uh, which are going to be low in calories and uh, are going to keep you fuller longer. So we keep saying this word sustained. What's, what does this mean? It means keeping you fuller for as long as possible so that you're not snacking all the time. Uh, if you take a look right here, we have a number of different foods. All of these are 300 calories. So this is what 300 calories looks like. If you look at the top, the row in red, these are the things that are very dense foods. You got cheeses, mayonnaise, butter, olive oil. Uh, and if you look at the serving sizes at the bottom, a very small amount is already 300 calories. Now if you go down, you look at the yellow rows and you look at the green rows, you'll see that you can eat, you know, four eggs, um, which are only 300 calories, or you can have 229 grams of pasta, whole wheat pasta, which is going to be 300 calories on its own. Um, so you can see right here that the lower down you go on this row, the uh, the healthier you're going to be eating, and the longer you're going to feel full, and the less likely you're going to be snacking, especially late at night, when a lot of us, I know myself included, uh, are going to be looking in the cupboards for some crackers or something of like that nature. So briefly, let's talk a little bit about some healthier versions of some of your favorite comfort foods. So again, here's a nice opportunity for anyone who's watching. If you're interested, you can absolutely take a screenshot or take a picture. I'm sorry my face is in the top corner. Um, but uh, the first one we have here is baked sweet potatoes uh, stuffed with chick uh, chickpea chili. So with just some basic ingredients, you can get yourself a hearty, comforting meal which requires very little prep and it's very easy to clean afterwards as well. Uh, these baked sweet potatoes would just be topped with an easy chickpea chili uh, and the website here describes it as a winner. So these are the basic ingredients that you need and this is a much healthier alternative than a chili that's going to be rich in uh, ground beef or mincemeat um, which is this processed food that we're trying to cut out of our diet as much as possible. So as a substitute we talked about earlier um, instead of cutting down, we can substitute. Uh, substituting that uh, meat with uh, chickpeas is going to help you uh, feel sustained and feel full, and it's uh, not going to be sacrificing taste whatsoever with this uh, recipe right here. And next one as well, uh, very briefly, we have lentil sloppy joes. Um, this is another one as well. Um, you can see right here that with both of these, we're often swapping out ground beef, which is processed meats, uh, for something uh, healthier, an alternative, which is rich in, in this case, uh, lentils. So with just a, a few simple ingredients as well, uh, you'll be able to make yourself some lentil sloppy joes. So anyone who's watching, you're more than welcome to come back and, and take a look at this if this is a recipe that interests you. Uh, another nice one here we have is easy overnight oats with chai seeds. So if you're feeling like you want to change up your breakfast a little bit, uh, what you can try is overnight oats. Uh, if you add some chai seeds for some thickness and a little bit of cinnamon and a small amount of maple syrup for some sweetness, uh, you'll have yourself a healthy uh, and f filling 
uh, breakfast, which is rich in fiber. Uh, and also if you top it off with blueberries and strawberries, very rich in uh, fiber and antioxidants as well. Here's another one we have. This is a quinoa curry bowl. So um, very simple in this case. Uh, all you need is a number of fresh vegetables, uh, a little bit of quinoa. Uh, you mix it together and you have yourself a nice dish. Um, it's uh, as they describe it, they're a lifesaver when you can't get to the store. So. Uh, very simple meals that we're showing you here, um, things that won't take you long, um, but a lot of these ingredients you might just have at home. Uh, and so if this is something that interests you, again, please feel free to come back to it uh, and, and take a picture or uh, write it down. Next one we got here, uh, we talk about whole wheat pasta. So what happens if you want to try something different? Uh, well, you absolutely can. Uh, we talked in our last week's uh, webinar about zucchini pasta. So you can see right here on the left you have uh, your typical, it looks like in this case, white pasta. And that's 730 calories, what you're seeing right there. Now, if you were to swap that out with some zucchini or any other vegetables as noodles, you're getting half the calories right there. So how do I integrate this into a recipe? Well. You're more than welcome to visit www.dietdoctor.com. This is a slide that we showed in last week's presentation. This is a keto uh, pasta carbonara with uh, zoodles, which is just zucchini noodles. So if you take a look right here, um, rich in proteins, it's got the high fat content if you are engaging in the keto diet. And of course, whenever we're engaging in a keto diet, we want as little carbs as possible so that our body can burn the fat instead. Um, so if this is a recipe that interests you, please, of course, uh, take a look at it uh, in the future. We also provided a link as well down low if you want to look at uh, that website for more recipes as well. So in this picture, we encourage you to spot the difference. You'll see that just adding a little bit more vegetables to your plate and portioning your proteins and starch content uh, a lot more helps to reduce the calories while helping you stay fuller for longer. Um, so you'll see right here that this is a much better balance uh, than this, and it's a lot less calories. And it's got a lot more greens, which are good for you as well, and still a, a good portion of uh, what looks like salmon in this picture. So uh, trying to substitute some of that meat uh, or that uh, fish for uh, vegetables is, uh, is definitely a good strategy which we can try and implement. All uh, right, so... How do we craft our dinner plate together? You can see in this picture right here, we have uh, about 50% fruits and vegetables, 25% protein-rich foods, and 25% whole grains and fiber-rich carbohydrates. Okay, so how exactly are we gonna put this all together? If this is what our average diet, or what we want our diet potentially to look like, how am I gonna portion this out? So here's this handy tool that we have for you. Uh, in terms of a single meal, for vegetables, you want to be able to keep the vegetables in two palms, so two palms full of vegetables. For grains, you want it to be about the size of your fist, closed fist. For proteins, just about the size of your palm for one meal. And fats, anything less than um, one tablespoon um, is, is definitely the way to go. So this is a simple strategy um, which you can uh, try and keep in mind whenever you're trying to portion out your food. So, you might be surprised that you want to eat less protein uh, and more vegetables. You might realize that one portion of protein is a lot smaller than you might have realized. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Here uh, we have another recipe as well, Taco Tuesdays with half the calories. So uh, I think a lot of us love tacos. I certainly do. Um, how can we make them healthier though? Well, we can swap out the taco shells. Uh, that we often get from a box uh, with lettuce wraps and uh, so these are basically shellless tacos um, which you can pick up just like a regular taco or you can dice it up and make it a taco salad as well half the calories or almost a third of the calories really just because you're cutting out the rich amount of uh, carbohydrates that come with the taco shells uh, keeping with the theme all right, no bun, no problem. How can we make sandwiches that are healthy? Well, if we uh, want to try to cut out the carbohydrates that we're eating uh, and cut out these calories, 
we can try something like a bell pepper with lettuce, uh, or a bell pepper or lettuce as our uh, as our alternative for bread. Um, this is a great alternative. It's uh, great for the barbecue season, or, or what's left what's left of it at least. Um, and as you can see right here, based on the picture, this is something that would definitely sustain you for an entire meal. Um, just another al alternative and a another solution to the problem we often see, which is, okay, I'm eating healthy, but you know, I can still do better. And how can I do better? Well, this is something that we can uh, definitely try if it's something that interests you. Um, now let's talk a little bit about some desserts. Um, the next things that we're going to show you here are recipes which you can find in Dr. Kernu's uh, 30 Days to a Healthier You. Um, you'll find the first one right here is a picture. Dr. Kernu is uh, showing you the frozen fruits and vegetables option. So the nice thing about frozen fruits and vegetables is that you can freeze them and this preserves all of their valuable nutrients. Uh, and they're a great use. They're um, great in smoothies. They're great for oatmeal. They're great for toppers for desserts. Um, and they're also a great snack as well. So instead of going for something in a box, you can go for a bowl of blueberries or a bowl of raspberries. Uh, get yourself some fiber uh, and you're eating the healthy sugars as well. Next, if you are interested, uh, Dr. Kernu has a book. It's 30 Days to a Healthier You. All proceeds do go to charity. Um, and in this book, there's a number of fantastic recipes. Here you'll have one um, on whole grain muffins with sunflower and flax seeds. So with just two cups of oatmeal, one cup of whole wheat, uh, pa uh, pastry flour, half a cup of sunflower seeds, a quarter cup of flax seeds, two teaspoons of baking soda, two egg whites and one cup of nuts or rice milk um, is all you really need. These muffins are, um, as Zoya described, who helped put this presentation together, uh, one of the many delicious and healthy recipes that are shared in this book and is one of her personal favorites, as she's told me. Um, so how do we put this together? Well, all you need to do is uh, lightly oil your muffin pans mix this concoction of all the ingredients that you have um, and then fill each muffin cup three quarters and then bake at 350 for 30 minutes and you'll have yourself then 12 muffins uh, which are rich in fiber and uh, nothing but good for you. Next we have um, baked apple with cinnamon. So this is uh, from a website that we found online. You're more than welcome to check it out. Uh, it's called Mini uh, uh, Minimalist Baker, so minimalistbaker.com. Uh, so this was their easy cinnamon baked apples, just uh, with some uh, set six to seven apples, two Granny Smiths, four sweet apples, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one and a half grams of cinnamon, three quarters teaspoons of grated ginger, three tablespoons starch of your choice to thicken it, three tablespoons of apple juice, and one pinch of sea salt is all you need. Um, one thing that you can also do is you can modify this recipe a little bit. Um, you can take out three tablespoons of sugar as a lot of times the apples might just be sweet enough. Uh, and you can also pre prepare this meal with uh, some fresh frozen yogurt, uh, which is uh, uh, definitely a healthier alternative than um, going with ice cream. So one serving of this dessert is only 195 calories. Uh, it's also gluten-free, grain-free, and vegan and it's also freezer friendly as well. So this is how you prepare it. You just peel and uh, core the apples, cut them thin slices, uh, add slices to the baking dish, toss it all together, uh, bake it at 350 for 45 minutes, and then an additional 10 to 15 without the cover on top. So Chad, how would you modify that? Would you would you would you do anything different? Just go back to the ingredients of that. Just go back a couple of slides there, Stuart. I'm just curious yep. to see um, if you want to uh, change a little bit. What would you do differently on that one, Chad? Um, actually, that looks like a pretty good recipe, actually. So, um, and I think I've actually did that recipe before. So, no, it's very good. So, one of the things I love to do is I love cinnamon, and um, and I. I substitute. I, I love sweetness, and I find cinnamon helps me eat less uh, sugar. So uh, I, I'll probably add a little bit of uh, um, more um, 
extra cinnamon to that. Um, can you put what type of seeds can you throw in there if you want to, Chad? Um, seed wise, I guess you could put in some almonds or not. I'm sorry, not almonds, uh, walnuts because walnuts would go uh, good with that. And, um, but cinnamon, it's not coming totally to my mind, but cinnamon, actually that spice or cinnamon period, it's got a lot of, um, antioxidants to it and health properties. So, uh, leave it with me and I'll give you more information on it on our next seminar. <laughs> But uh, that's a very good recipe, and I, I literally, I think I've tried this one before, and it t- turned out really well, because it's from the Minimalist, uh, minimalist Baker, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so, you got it. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and Chad also mentioned in the comments that new studies are showing that our frozen fruits and vegetables, which we talked about in a few slides in the back, uh, can be more nutritious than what we're purchasing in stores because by the time the consumer purchases the fresh fruits and vegetables and we take them home, they've lost a lot of their nutrients. So frozen fruits and vegetables are flash frozen uh, at the time that they're ripe uh, and it helps to preserve a lot of their nutrients. So thank you for that, Chad. Um, another cool recipe here, and this is something I want to try actually, this sounds really good, is uh, from eatingbirdfood.com. Uh, all you would need here is one and a half cups of plain Greek yogurt, uh, two tablespoons of maple syrup or honey. Uh, of course, you can also do less as well. Um, that is just the recommendations off of the website. But of course, um, if you find that too sweet, you can always cut that in half. And I don't think you'd be sacrificing the flavor in any sense. You can also do one tablespoon of vanilla extract, uh, about a third or a half cup of strawberry sliced, a third or half cup of blueberries, and then two tablespoons of unsweetened coconut flakes, if that's something you're interested in. How do you make this? Well, you just get a uh, thin pan and put on parchment paper. You mix all these ingredients together. You spread it out evenly across the baking sheet, scatter in your blueberries and your coconut. Uh, and then all you need to do is blast freeze it for two to three hours, break it up into little pieces. And then by having three pieces at a time or so, um, this will be a snack that uh, you can keep around for many many days and uh, it's just uh, something that I'm excited to uh, to try actually um, so Zoya says that freezer friendly for three to five months um, however it's also best to let these sit three to five minutes before you eat them she recommends a one serving three pieces of bark and that's going to equate to just about 94 calories and that's what's on the website so surprisingly little calories for how good this looks all right uh, shifting gears a little bit, how do we make healthier foods uh, and how do we make them affordable? So one of the myths that uh, I, we want to maybe debunk is that eating healthier is more expensive. Well, according to a study that was done by the Harvard School of Public Health, which was back in 2013, uh, over a one-year study, they found that a healthier diet uh, approximately saves the average person about one and a half dollars per day. Uh, and that may not seem significant in the uh, in a month per se, but in one year, that's going to be saving you about 550 extra dollars. Now, we often think that an unhealthy diet would equate to a uh, a greater financial burden, and that's potentially true as well. So, um, it's always good if you can to try and implement as many healthy options in your diet as you can, um, because not only are you going to be saving money uh, on the regular just through grocery bills. Um, but it also can help to uh, promote good health, especially cardiovascular health, uh, in the long term. And if you're looking for opportunities to uh, save as much money as you can, of course, everybody is. Uh, these are some stores that are participating in price matching, so which basically means that if you buy something from them and you show from another store that they're selling it for less, they will adjust the price that they sold the item to you for to match or even beat sometimes their competitors. So you'll see right here is the uh, a list of just a few of the stores potentially in your area um, as well as some of the policies that they have. Um, a good note for you as well is that you do need to have proof of the lower price at another store um, and it's also important to have the proof of payment that you purchased the item from the store that you're going to. So keeping your receipts is also important so that you can uh, you can engage in these price matching activities. Now, some easier ways that technology is making us 
making this possible is through a number of different apps. Uh, we're going to show you three here. Uh, the first one we have is Flip. Flip is a mobile app which is available on your Android or your iPhone, um, which allows you to access weekly digital flyers um, so that you can price match from home before even going to the grocery store. Um, so there's a lot of different stores that are participating in this. So Flip includes stores such as Walmart, Loblaws, Sobeys, Costco, Metro, uh, as well as No Frills. Um, and also, if you're not comfortable with using it on the mobile app, they do also have it on their website. If you just look up flip.com, that's F-L-I-P-P.com, you'll be able to find the, uh, the website version as well. And you've, you'll also be able to find that link in the video description. So if you just uh, go into the video description of this video right here, you'll be able to find that link. Another one as well is something called Sale Whale. Again, something very similar. Uh, you get weekly flyers, which you can browse, so that you can take a look at all of the stores uh, and see which one is providing you with the best bang for your buck. Uh, what's cool about Wholesale as well is that you can set notifications or, on, or alarms for whenever something goes on sale. So let's say you were planning to make something such as the zucchini pasta we talked about. If you wanted to be notified of when zucchini was going on sale in one of the stores, you can establish that. So you can find your product, you can set a notification, and it would just ring to your phone whenever it's on sale. And then you can go grab it and, and save yourself some money in that sense. And finally, we have Rebe. So Rebe is an app that allows you to find digital versions of coupons that you'd normally find in a lot of paper flyers or newspapers. Um, you can also browse the flyers and scour the website because it's updated weekly. Um, a thing to note about all three of these websites is that they're very much the same in the sense that uh, they offer you opportunities to save some money going to the grocery store. And it's just a matter of personal preference. So all of these three uh, websites are in the video description. So if you're interested, please feel free to check it out um, and download it to your phone as well. So how do you plan to track your progress for the next 30 days? Uh, I've done a lot of talking here, and uh, I talked at the beginning of the presentation about establishing goals for yourself. So in the very similar vein, I want you all to think about uh, what does your support system look like, all right? And how can you develop an action plan with the resources that you have available to uh, take some of the things that we've talked about today and, and maybe implement it into your life? Um, so if you're watching the video, of course, it means that this is something that's interesting to you and it's something that you're trying to implement. Uh, so I encourage everyone to take some time to think about what they think is actually possible for them uh, and how they think they can do it. And uh, of course, we also have a, a, an email as well and we'll share it at the end of the presentation. And you're always welcome to email us uh, at drkernu232 uh, at gmail.com and uh, ask us any questions as well and we're always more than happy to help you along your way. Dr. Kearney, do you have anything to add to that? No, oh, I think you're muted. Let me turn you on. There you go. There you go. Um, to me, it is that um, it's like the Toronto Raptors. Is that uh, you got to surround yourself with uh, people that have the same philosophy, want to work with you. Um, so Stewart's one of my health buddies. I know Chad's on there too. I see John Deacon. And I have a few hundred other people out there as well that are going to make it easier for me to be successful. And hopefully I and our team can make it more successful for yourself. Uh, I realize a lot of the stuff is, is hard. Um, on the other hand is that, um, you know, what, what I've learned right now is that from a health perspective, there's not very much good or nothing good about being overweight. Um, you're more prone to infections. We see that uh, in COVID is that you're more likely to die, but that goes across other infections. We learn from the cancer. There's a whole bunch of cancers that make things worse. We know from heart disease, you're likely to have a heart attack, stroke, congestive heart failure, dementia, Alzheimer's disease. And so um, I, I think it's time to think about what can we do differently? And frankly, there's a lot. And just have, as you point in, the, when you first started, it to me it's no longer okay to just sit back and do nothing. It's okay to do something and try something different. So, 
to me, I'm kind of excited about this uh, high-fat diet, a healthier version of it. Um, try to use the best of research to help and the best of humankind and, and, and supports as well. Uh, then after this 30 days, I, I'm going to see if it helps suppress my appetite at nighttime. Will I be perfect? Absolutely not. Will I be better? Absolutely yes. Then I'm going to go work with Chad and we're going to be vegetarians for another 30 days. Um, and then I see John Deacon on the, on the line there and he's actually, he helps me soften the blow because um, at times is that um, I, I push too hard and what John will, will say is start off slow, make one little change at a time. Maybe for today you're, you're going to actually buy running shoes and then maybe a week from now you're going to actually go for a walk. Or you're going to just change your diet. Your go-to right now is that Harvey's this week has their special two hamburgers for six $6. Well, get two veggie burgers for $6 uh, if you want to try something a little bit different. Um, and there's no mayo in my ones, just all the vegetables you can pack in there. If I was really smart, I'd say hold the bun and just give me, uh, I'll bring in um, two, uh, two green peppers and I'll just wrap it in green pepper. So, you know, there's different, there's different, different, different things. And, Try different things, and um, I find that uh, getting the support around you makes it that much more fun, more manageable, and don't be hard on yourself. Um, just keep moving forwards, ups and downs. I saw John Deacon there on, on there, and I asked John Deacon what's his thoughts on, he, he's actually um, made a lot of changes, and... Uh, Give, give, John, um, Dr. Deacon, can you give us a couple of tips on um, how you change uh, some of your eating habits and uh, and some of, some of the tricks you want to pass on if you if you want to take a moment or two? I, I think uh, one of the lucky things I have is is a wife who's uh, who's uh, willing to help me help support me. So uh, I think that's for me that's been a huge benefit. Can, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, it's perfect. Yep. Okay. So the first thing I first thing is to do things together is a lot easier than doing it by yourself. So encouraging my wife and applaud whenever she does something that is appealing is uh, is a hit. last last night we had a an all vegetarian dinner that she's made before and uh, vegan dinner and um, when I when I uh, thanked her for it, she uh, she says, "What are we going to do today?" And uh, uh, so that that's that's my first point. My second point is, as you just mentioned, what I like to do, I like to take um, take a little step and turn it into a habit. Um, for for example, um, when I started the the uh, to get into this. With, the, with Dr. Kernew, the first thing I decided was, this is going to be tough to do all at once. So why don't I start and say, breakfast is going to be vegan. So uh, I did that, either with oatmeal or with, uh, with uh, uh, other cereals that are um, low or no fat, and, uh, and with lots of fruit and, uh, and uh, soybean milk. And, and before you know it, that part of the day is done. I don't drink coffee. And uh, uh, so that was one thing. Then the next thing we start, I focused on was, well, let's try this for lunch. And we started having sandwiches with cucumbers and tomatoes instead of with, uh, with, uh, with uh, burgers or, or uh, ham or whatever. And the next thing I did was I stopped eating cheese. And uh, so it's just gradual little, gradual little steps and a lot of encouragement between my wife and myself. I think that's uh, uh, important. The final thing I would say is, uh, for those of us who are male, being part of the kitchen is, uh, is also a wonderful thing because it gives my wife courage when she sees me in there trying to create a meal uh, or part of a meal with her. So those are my three little tips. Uh, being part of the kitchen, taking a little step at a time, uh, focusing on one meal or one snack or one part of the day until you've got that hip of habit, and then moving on to the next one. Over to you. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, Stuart, one of the things I really enjoyed that uh, that 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 basket of all the herbs there, and yeah. um, and I, I think one of the things is that uh, getting a garden, um, and that we're going to explore how to how to do that a bit better. And uh, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that you? And I like the fact that your family batch cooks and uh, does things. And uh, uh, what other tips do you want? Any other final tips you want to put on today? Um, no, I I. I think uh, my family's always just trying to try new recipes. Uh, tonight I had a dinner. Uh, the dinner was something my mother hasn't made in five or six years, but it was uh, just some lean meat, uh, some healthy sauce that she made with some bell peppers, some mushrooms, some onions, uh, and just a little bit of uh, brown rice on the side. And uh, I had never had that before. We've, we've had similar things, but uh, trying new things, keeping it exciting, and uh, just being conscious and constantly trying to learn about uh, what am I putting into my diet and this is really helping me. Um, so we have made a conscious effort. Uh, I've definitely made more of a conscious effort, especially being at university over the past few years where I've had to fend for myself. And um, I think I've learned a lot just by doing that. So I like what Dr. Deacon said about being in the kitchen a little bit. Um, I'm certainly not the best cook in the world, but I've become a little bit better over the last few years because I've explored and I've tried new things and I did things that made me uncomfortable and I learned from those things. So, um, I think that's a nice takeaway is to try things that make you uncomfortable, but, uh, you know, learning doesn't happen in, in a bubble. Uh, it, it happens when you step out of that bubble. So, um, there's my message for you. So I'm going to, uh, uh Chad, do you have any final, uh, thoughts about this, uh, little session today um yeah it was an amazing it was an amazing session um very informative in that but and and just and dr dick and i really appreciate your comments but at the end of the day is you know what you gotta find it within yourself so um there are times when yeah we we ate a lot of different bad foods we know that they're bad foods we're educated enough we know um, what's the difference between healthy eating and bad eating. So, you know, it's up to you to finally get mad at yourself and go, do I really want to live that kind of life? Especially if you're dealing with any form of diabetes, cardiovascular disease or whatever. Just take some time out for yourself. Slow search, meditate, whatever it takes and go, the party's over. I got to get strict. I want to get healthy. And if you try the healthier diet, you're actually going to feel the difference. So we know really down in our gut, I follow your gut, really, not only with food, but your intuition on what's better for you. You're going to go out to Harvey's or something fast food, or can you bite the bullet and then just go over to the grocery store and pick up a few bananas to get you through for the next couple of hours. So, yes, support is really important um, that you have a a partner, a wife, a husband, whatever it may be, um, different people that are in the same, same mindsets, but ultimately, it's up to you. You have to make the difference for yourself because you don't want to be looking on your deathbed going, oh my God, I've got regrets. Why didn't I just try or do what I, I knew would have been better for me? <laughs> That's my comment. Um, fantastic. Um, I want to thank, uh, first of all, Zoya, who couldn't be here today. Zoya's our, our, one of our superstar she's been with us for for many for years and she's been very helpful in in cooking she's also my personal psychiatrist at times i have a lot of psychiatrists um um that that, that helped me and uh, i learned from and, and gather strengths she's writing a big exam tomorrow i'm sure she's going to ace it and she was kind enough to really work hard in getting this presentation but she wants to be ready for exam tomorrow and uh, we all pray and wish well for her uh Stuart, fantastic job um I want to thank everybody, and I think, you know, Chad, your comments about um, our, 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 we, we have to take initiative. Um, I like John saying and um, making some changes there, and the people you see here have all tried hard and made some changes and uh, been successful at it. And uh, so, to me, um, keep trying and keep trying over again, and 30 days at a time, um, make a commitment for the next 30 days, this is what I'm going to do. So, 
starting this Monday, the next 30 days, I'm making a conscious effort to a high fat keto diet. I'm getting my keto sticks and I'm going to actually be on a healthy keto diet. Is that going to change how I look at the world for the rest of the time? I don't know, but you know what? I, I feel kind of stuck at a certain weight right now. I'm going to try something different. Will it work or not? I don't know, but there's some good science behind that too as well. Uh, and there's a lot more to go right now. Uh, any comments on the, um, on the from anybody else or on the uh, internet there, Stuart? Um, we have one just asking uh, if you'll be at tennis tomorrow, 6.30. Yeah, so I'm going to be at tennis tomorrow at uh, 6.30, uh, unless it rains. Um, and I have to be at clinic at uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, so at uh, 7.30 I have to be on the road. I won't be showered for clinic tomorrow, so I'll try not to smell too bad. Just kidding. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to play hopefully tennis twice tomorrow at 6.30, then again after clinic. Um, uh, to me, last night is I finished late. I went and played tennis last night, got home at 11 o'clock and uh, enjoyed tennis. I, I know that the lights on our tennis court are still on at least till 11.30 at night time. I yeah. didn't know that before. Mm. Uh, they are going to go off. I'm not sure what time they do go off. Um, and uh, I appreciate those that are, that are, that are coming out. And, um, you know, it's just a, a wonderful uh, group of people who are working together and are all making each other healthier. And uh, let's just do it and try again. Any other final uh, story to get the last word? What, what's your thoughts for, for tonight? Well, uh, first and foremost, you already mentioned it, but huge thank you to Zoya who, who really put uh, this entire presentation together. And uh, she's a pioneer for educating me on topics such as these. And, and so I, I've had the privilege of being able to work with her for a few years. And uh, I had the privilege now of being able to present her presentation. And hopefully I did it some justice. Um, I think uh, I, I, I've said everything that I think I could say, but uh, I really liked a lot of the takeaway messages that... Uh, Dr. Deakin, Chad, and Dr. Kernew talked about, and just about, uh, you know, not living with regrets, you know. Uh, if you want to make changes, now is a good time as ever. Uh, the world is changing. Things are things are weird, so might as well make a, uh, a drastic change yourself in your life. Um, uh, we're here to support you all the time. We have uh, a ton of resources. We have this uh, email link, which you can always email us for questions, and we'll be able to answer them. Um, and we also want to make our future presentations as collaborative as possible. So um, if you guys ever have any comments, any questions, or if you ever want to engage with us, please always feel free to ask us questions. That's why we're here. We're all here to learn together, and we're all here to uh, enjoy uh, each other's company on a Friday night. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us, and uh, we'll hope to see you next week. So remember, new at 232gmail.com. You can call the office. Um, saying I want to start, I want some support, I don't want some support, I just let you know what's, what's going on, we'll give it to you. So we as a group, uh, on, we're, we're going to start this month, and we're going to do this every month, and we're going to try this over and over again. So uh, um, I wish everybody a great night, uh, fantastic presentation, and uh, I just got a few more phone calls to make, and I wish everybody a good night, and uh, we'll, see ya. we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Right. Good night, everyone. And we're good. Okay, how do you guys feel?